In this video, we will investigate the Ehrenfest theorem, named after the Austrian physicist Paul Ehrenfest. It states that the expectation values of physical observables follow classical equations of motion, if the potential is given in terms of a polynomial of degree 2 or less. This means either flat, linear or parabolic. This is a very important statement connecting quantum mechanics and classical mechanics. In order to show this, we will start by calculating the time derivative of the expectation value of a general operator A. Throughout this video, we will use the following abbreviation to denote an expectation value of an operator in the state psi. The first thing we need to do is use the product rule, which gives us three terms. In the first and last terms, we can use the abstract Schrodinger equation in order to replace the time derivative of the cat and bra states. Next, we collect the first and third terms together and write the operators in terms of a commutator. Finally, our time derivative of the expectation value of A is given by I over H bar times the expectation value of the commutator of the Hamiltonian with A plus the expectation value of the time derivative of A. Let us now apply this result to the position operator X. The position operator itself is not explicitly time dependent, so only the commutator term remains. In order to evaluate this commutator, we note that the commutator of x with any function of x will vanish, so we can immediately remove the potential from this commutator. Next, the commutator of p squared with x can be evaluated to minus 2 i h bar p. This means the time derivative of the expectation value of the position operator is given by 1 over m times the expectation value of the momentum operator. This really does look like the classical equation of motion for x. However, in order to use this equation, we also need to know how the expectation value of the momentum operator evolves over time. We perform a similar calculation, but here we have to calculate the commutator of the potential with p. Since we can write the momentum operator in quantum mechanics as a derivative, we must include a dummy function f here, which we remove later on. Otherwise, we would miss out on the effect of the product rule due to the derivative. The result of this commutator is i h bar times the derivative of the potential. This means the time derivative of the expectation value of the momentum operator is given by the negative expectation value of the gradient of the potential, which we can identify as a force. This also looks like the classical equation of motion for the momentum. However, there is one slight problem. In general, the expectation value of the derivative of the potential is not the same as the derivative of the potential evaluated at the expectation value of x. While the first expression is the result of our calculations, only the second one should be compared to classical mechanics. In order to see how exactly these two expressions are different, let us expand the expectation value of the force into a Taylor series around the point where x is the same as its expectation value. We do this up to second order and write everything else as O of x to the third power. Around all of those terms we have an expectation value, but since the expectation value is a linear operation, we can write this as the sum of several individual expectation values. In the first term we have the force evaluated at the expectation value of the position operator. This is just a number, so we can remove the expectation value here. In the second term, f prime of the expectation value of x is also just a number. Therefore, we can write this outside of the expectation value. Next, the expectation value of x minus its expectation value is equal to the expectation value of x minus itself. Therefore, this term vanishes. In the third term, we can write the force again outside of the expectation value. And the term next to it is exactly the definition of the variance of x. So, if we assume that the second derivative of the force is zero, all higher derivatives will also be zero, and then the expectation value of the force would be equal to the force evaluated at the expectation value of the position operator, which means 
that the quantum mechanical operators actually do fulfill classical equations of motion. But again, this is only true if the second derivative of the force vanishes. Finally, let us investigate what this condition means. If the second derivative of the force vanishes, then the negative third derivative of the potential must vanish. If the potential is constant, so proportional to 1, the third derivative is obviously 0. Therefore, such a potential fulfills the requirements. If we assume a linear or quadratic potential, the third derivative is still 0. Therefore, also those kinds of potentials lead to expectation values having classical equations of motion. However, if we assume a potential proportional to x cubed, the third derivative is 6, and therefore such a potential is not suitable. Let's summarize. We have shown that for constant, linear or quadratic potentials, the expectation values of quantum mechanical operators follow classical equations of motion, which is known as the Ehrenfest theorem. And that's pretty much it for this video. Thanks for watching.